our diamond toy rail. Kind of just up in one craters here. How's everyone doing today? Oh, there we go. A little bit of excitement here. Uh, well, I'm going to talk to you all for the next 10, 15 minutes before our interaction begins. So right now is a great time to get up, go grab some food, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Um, now, before we do get started, I do have a couple safe reminders for everyone. Uh, the first one, I'm sure you all are well aware, but this is a 24 hour splash zone. Now, we are not going to ask the whales to get you all wet on purpose. That would be really mean. Um, but you can see they are quite large. So, as they swim around the pool, um, as have, they have fun, the water can splash up and over the sides and onto your feet or belongings. So, I highly suggest picking everything up off the ground, putting on a table and a chair, basically somewhere nearby that is higher and drier. Now, the second seat through reminder that I have for everyone is you all see these wonderful acrylic uh, panels right in front of you. Um, we just ask you please keep your arms, legs, cameras, cell phones, basically everything that is yours back on your side. Um, and that is not only for the safety of you and your expensive electronics, but also for the safety of our whales here. So if anything does happen to fall over or slip underneath, uh, please let myself or one of the other things Mary know, and we'll make sure to get that back for you. So now that we got all of that out of the way, um, let me start out by telling you a little bit about our facility here. So here at Orchid Encounter, we have five pools and they're all connected together between a series of channels and gates. So what that means is that throughout the day, we can actually open gates, we can open and have whales have access to multiple pools, they can have access to one pool, we can have a big group of whales together, we can divide up into smaller social groupings. Uh, so we have a lot of variety, a lot of different things that we can do each and every day. And each and every day for our whales is completely and totally different. So the whales that you see back here right now, uh, we were back here early this morning, and who knows if we'll be back here later today. So it kind of varies day by day, hour by hour. So all of those five pools add up to about 6 million gallons of salt water. And that is just here for our whales. So they curve all the way around out to our main stadium uh, out there. So lots and lots of room, lots of pool space uh, for our whales. Now, Seawalk San Diego is home to 10 killer whales. We have five males and we have five females. Now, they range in age from Amaya, who is our youngest at three years old. Uh, she's actually going to turn four here on December 2nd. So, we're really excited to celebrate her fourth birthday here coming up. Um, all the way up to Courtney, who is our oldest whale, at about 54 years old. So, we've got quite the age range there. Now, one of the common questions people ask us is what is the average lifespan of killer whales? Well, there's still a lot to be determined, a lot to know. Uh, we can tell you the average of our whales here, but out of the ocean, it's a little bit harder to be able to see them frequently, to be able to track them, and to know when they're born, and then all the way until they pass away. So, we see on average anywhere between about 30, 40 years. Uh, females have a tendency to live a little bit longer than that of males. So Porky, uh, being 54, she's definitely um, an older killer whale, but she is a really incredible animal. Uh, she definitely has a lot of energy despite her age, um, and she hangs out and just interacts with both people as well as um, the other whales. So she's a really, really cool whale to definitely check out. So you guys might be able to see her at some point out for our main presentation, which is not back here right now. Now, the three whales that we do have back here, we'll start with Big Handsome Man all the way on the far left. Uh, that is Ulysses. Now, Ulysses is our largest whale that is here at SeaWorld San Diego. Uh, he weighs just shy of 10,000 pounds. Uh, he's about 21 feet long. And now, he is also the father to our youngest, Amaya, so he is a dad here as well. Now that is Ulysses, and to the right of Ulysses right there, they both are watching what's going on inside of the fish house. They can hear and see us all moving around there. Uh, that is Pete. Now Pete weighs about 8,000 pounds, so he's almost 2,000 pounds uh, less than 
then, sorry, excuse me, then Ulysses, um, but he's still also a full grown adult male. So, a couple of the ways, since we have a couple big adult males here, you can tell the difference between males and females is going to be on their size. So, males on average are much larger than that of females, both weight wise as well as length wise. Uh, the other way is by looking at their pectoral flippers. So, those flippers that are on either side of their body, they look a little bit unproportionately large on males compared to their general overall body size. And they look a little bit more unfortunately small on females. So we also have Shuka cruising around in here. And throughout the interaction, definitely look at their pectoral flippers. Um, for those of you sitting at a table of four over here, you want to be listening to pectoral flippers is about the same size as your table of four. So look at that. Think about how many people, how many plates you can fit on that table. Uh, that is just one of those pectoral flippers. So. He might look small from afar, but he's definitely a really, really big boy. Now, Keith, uh, like I said, he's a little bit smaller. Keith, we like to kind of call our gentle giant of our group here. Um, he is a pretty chill whale. He loves just hanging out with trainers, giving a lot of attention, back rubs, belly rubs. Um, he loves to blow bubbles. Uh, so he can definitely be described as, if you were a human, uh, want to sit and watch more of a movie marathon than go out and run a marathon. So, as opposed to Ulysses on the left, who is larger, he's definitely more athletic. So, he is definitely different personalities, different body types, different abilities for each and every male. So, just like us, they all have different likes, different dislikes, um, different, just, they're completely and totally different. They have different personalities. So, uh, so you definitely will be able to see a little bit of those differences between these two big boys uh, during our interaction here coming up. And then last but not least, we have Shuka cruising around in this pool. Uh, she is on that far side over there. Uh, you guys probably haven't seen it, but if you check out our underwater beauty, you might have seen that we have a bunch of big boulders that are along this whole wall here. Uh, so we kind of have some natural enrichment, natural toys for our whales. Yes, okay. And then inside of those boulders, uh, we actually have some perch that are living in there. So a lot of our whales like to look down, check out the fish, see what they're doing. Um, they kind of are, are cohesively living here uh, in this pool. So it's fun for both the whales as well as the fish uh, to kind of check each other out and play games with each other. So she could spend a lot of time cruising along all of these boulders down here, uh, watching the fish as they swim around. Now, Shuka is a dainty whale compared to these two big boys. Um, she weighs right around 5,000 pounds, and she is a 25-year-old female. So she is full-grown as well, same as the two big boys. Uh, she is definitely one of our most athletic whales. So she impresses me each and every day with her athleticism, how high she can jump, how fast she can swim. Uh, she is definitely goes above and beyond for sure. You'll definitely be able to see that throughout the whole interaction, seeing how just different she is. She definitely has a fun, sassy personality. Um, I would say she's one of my favorite whales here. Um, she's just got a lot of spunk and just a really great personality. Uh, despite her little bit smaller size. Now, as you guys are watching the whales here, um, I'm going to point out some really cool distinguishing features about their bodies. Uh, the first one being their eye patches. You might notice they have two white oval eye patches on either side of their face. Now, a lot of people think that their eyes are located inside these oval eye patches, but they're not. They're actually just right in front of them, right by the corners of their mouths. Um, and killer whales have relatively small eyeballs in comparison to their overall size. They have about the same size eyes as that of a cow. So, cows are obviously much smaller than killer whales, um, but they both have about that same size eye. Now, moving up on top of their head, you might notice that they have a blowhole. Now, killer whales breathe air just like you and I, they are mammals, uh, so they do need to surface to breathe that air. Now, a lot of people think that water will spurt out of their blow holes when they breathe out. Um, it's actually just a little bit of condensation or a little bit of water that might be resting on the surface. 
So you'll notice they breathe slightly different than us. They will exhale first, get any debris, anything that is resting on the top of their blowhole out and away. So they can then take a nice, clean, crisp uh, breath of air back in. So that is a little bit about their blowhole there. Now as we continue to move on, I already mentioned those pectoral flippers on uh, our big boys that are hanging out here. Uh, but the pectoral flippers do have bones in them. They have a very similar bone structure inside each pectoral flipper very similar to that of our hand. So if you took an x-ray of our hand all the way up to our shoulder, uh, killer whales have that same very similar, uh, kind of a little bit long finger type uh, bone structure in their pectoral flippers all the way up to kind of that, what would be that uh, shoulder bone area. Now unlike their pectoral flippers, their dorsal fin, which is that fin right on the top of their back, that does not have any bones or muscles in it. So that is one of the most common questions that we get asked here, especially when people see um, whales like Ulysses or Keats swimming around in the pool. It's why does their dorsal fin curve? Well, like I said, they don't have any bones or muscles inside of their dorsal fins. And on full-grown adult males like these two boys, those dorsal fins on average grow to be about six feet tall. So if you imagine a person who is six foot tall, without any bones or muscles, we might definitely have a tendency to curve to one side or another. So it's a little bit of gravity that can take uh, its toll on their bodies, just like it takes its toll on our bodies as well. And it's a little bit about their activity. And if you think about our bells here, you can see that both Lucy's and Keeper have their heads to the surface and are watching what's going on at the surface. They definitely spend a little bit more time at the surface of the water because we're at the surface, you're at the surface. A lot of the fun things that they get are at the surface. So we're constantly trying to come up with new ideas, new things like the rocks and the fish to have the whales swimming down deeper, lower, um, keep them thinking not always at the surface. So like I said, it's that gravity that can take its hold, a little bit of genetics, and then a little bit of their activity. Now, as you continue to keep moving down the whale's bodies, you will notice that at the back of their body, they have very powerful tail flukes. Okay, so I am joined by Connor, and we have just followed the whales over, which means that our interaction is about to start. So, if you are in the inner, or if you are in the dive mic, you want to grab the camera and skip them out. The first photo opportunity is going to take place on that far side of the pool. All three whales are going to head over and show you how powerful those tail flukes are. Now that behavior is how whales will stun their fish. So when they are hunting out in the wild, a lot of times they'll kind of group pairing or other types of fish into a tight bait ball, and then they'll use their tails in that cooking type motion um, to be able to stun them and more easily be able to catch them. Okay, so here comes another great behavior with all three whales over on that far side of the pool, right where Connor is throwing that snowball to let you know where to come up and out of the water. Here comes Chupa, Ulysses, and Heat. And you can definitely see a little bit of that athletic ability between the three of them. So I said Chupa's a very, very athletic whale. Ulysses being 10,000 pounds is still quite athletic. And then Heat is our big gentle giant. So you guys might notice me holding this yellow box here. Uh, this is actually for an underwater home system that we have. So we have our whistles that tell the whales good job and turn back to us for some sort of reinforcement. But we also have this yellow box that plays a very similar sound under the surface of the water. So when the whales are swimming fast or really deep, they can still hear good job. That's exactly what we're looking for. Come on back uh, to us. Now, in addition 
to that sound. We also have a variety of other types of sounds that we can play um, that are associated with a variety of different behaviors. So our whales know uh, auditory signals for some of the behaviors as well as hand signals for those same behaviors. So it's really cool, different, unique way of so that is Shuka on the left hand side, and then here's our two big boys. Nice. And Ulysses on my right. Here. 
here. Shuka is going to come cruising through here in three, two, and one. There she is. Watch that little wave.
direction. Okay, so everyone pay attention to Kim's right here and see. That was it. So we just give our whales a little three second pause. Uh, we can still reinforce the incorrect behaviors because obviously all of us make mistakes and it's a really big important part of learning to make mistakes. So we can still reinforce it. Ice, jello, things, we can move on, we can ask again. Uh, basically we draw attention to the positives, the correct behaviors, and we don't draw any attention to the negatives or the incorrect behaviors. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is about time for our interaction that comes to an end. But before it does, all three whales are going to work together. In the center of the pool, here comes one final photo opportunity. Pete, Ulysses, and Shuka are going to give you all a big killer whale wave goodbye. Now, on behalf of our trainers, our dying staff, and of course our family,